Hey y'all, this is the Dr. Nurse with thedrnurse.com. And as a follow-up to the video that I posted the other day, I wanted to talk to you all real quick today about hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome. Um, in the video the other day, I talked about DKA and just some few facts about DKA. So today I want to talk to you about HHS or hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome. First of all, who gets it? How is it going to kill your patient? And why is their glucose so high with this disorder? Much, much higher than it is with DKA. So who gets HHS? Well, DKA patients are, are type 1 diabetics. So type 1 diabetics um, get DKA because they have an insulin deficiency in their body due to an autoimmune issue with the beta cells of their pancreas, right? So our type 2 diabetics are the ones who get hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome. So what are the key differences between DKA and HHS? Well, for starters, there are no ketone bodies in the blood with HHS. So there's no ketones, so there's no acidosis. And the reason that there are no ketones and that there are no acidosis going on with HHS is because our type 2 diabetics do have insulin in their bodies to protect against lipolysis. And lipolysis, or the breakdown of fat, is what leads to ketone bodies and the ketoacid that acidosis that you see with DKA. Um, second of all, the ECF, or the extracellular fluid, the, the uh, vascular space, is extremely hyperosmolar with HHS. Extremely hyperosmolar. Um, and the reason for that is because their blood sugar is so, so very high, okay? You remember osmolarity or colloidal osmotic pressure, it is created by the stuff that is within the vascular space, okay? And when I say stuff, I know that doesn't sound intelligent, but just hang with me. I'm talking about proteins like albumin. I'm talking about glucose and sodium. Those are the three big contributors to colloidal osmotic pressure or the pulling force that those particles create for fluid. So because the sugar is so, so high, the serum is extremely hyperosmolar. And these patients are prone to extreme dehydration, okay? How is it gonna kill your patient? Well, with DKA, we are very, very concerned and worried about hypokalemia. With HHS, we've got to protect these patients against hypovolemia. So fluid replacement, hypovolemia, those are our priorities with HHS because the sugar is so high that osmotic diuresis is very, very severe with these patients. Okay, so meaning when the polyuria kicks in with HHS, you know, the glucose gets pulled out with it and the glucose pulls more urine. So these patients are extremely prone to becoming hypovolemic. So that's your priority with your HHS patient. Finally, why is their glucose so high? Why is it so much higher typically in an HHS patient than a DKA patient? Well, our type 2 diabetics are the ones who get HHS. And a lot of times these patients will go undiagnosed for you know, years even. Um, and then one day, you know, they just wake up and they're like, man, you know, I've been so tired and thirsty and weak and, you know, they don't know what's going on. So they go in to get seen and their sugar is 800 and they had no idea they were diabetic. Whereas our type one diabetics, they are typically diagnosed at a very early age. They know when their sugar is high. They know when their sugar is low. They know when to go in and get treated. So they go in and get treated. But if your patient doesn't know that they're diabetic, they're likely to put off um, seeking treatment. And also the appearance of the three Ps that go along with hyperglycemia, they're much, much more subtle with our HHS patients than with our DKA patients. So sometimes these folks will come in and it is nothing for their blood glucose to be 1200 or higher. Okay. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm on Instagram and I'm also on Facebook. Have a great day and I'll see y'all here soon.